during the like, 16th, 17th century, the Vatican outlawed it because they, they, they called it uh, 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 the movement of the devil. Um, or the devil in, in, in music, and you weren't allowed to write write music that had that uh, that movement in it, that flatted fifth. Um, the flatted fifth is a big part of uh, Black Sabbath's uh, music. In fact, the song Black Sabbath has that flatted fifth, and uh, a lot of our, our our riffs and our, our our chord progressions are based around that that flatted fifth. So I mean. You know, I like the dark stuff, the dark spooky stuff, and that movement is just so evil, so dark. That, you know, it's it's um it's one of the main ingredients to our sound. Thank you. Hey. I gotta say, I I guess I come from a demented family because I was raised on the Universal horror movies and on heavy right. metal. But uh, I was wondering, since you talked about. You know, making your own like, or you know, orchestrating your own, you know, to a movie. Would you ever think about just getting a crew together and just doing your own movie in the twenties or thirties style? You know, that, 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 that's a good question. I mean, I've given it a lot of thought, and uh, you know, one of these days, my goal is to uh, uh, to to to. Well, if and let me let me back up. If I do indeed decide decide to do that. Um, I would love to to, to um, remake uh, one of my favorite movies, which is the Black Cat from 1934. And uh, if I did make, remake that, it would definitely be in black and white. And I would use actors that actually did look like Bela Lugosi and Boris Karloff, only because I'm so fanatical about that movie. Of course, you know, I'd probably uh, change the plot around a little bit and update it. Um, to uh, the 21st century, but um, I'm totally into uh, into just, uh, recapturing that vibe that those movies had in, in the 20s and 30s, and um, yeah, I'm just I'm just obsessive about that that period of, of film. Would it be more graphic than the original? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Because in the original, they every time they did something, they took the camera away. Yeah, it's it more like screen. Yeah, it's, it's more suggested. suggested. More suggestive and, and, and not as graphic. Kirk, good to see you, hey. Hey. Uh, First off, what some of the musical scores over the years that like, you know, like Halloween or like nothing else you that like stuck in your head? And it's mm -hmm. like you said, a Ryan Festival. We do that at the Ryan Festival, Kill Ball, and uh, Injustice for All, maybe. I'm sorry, I, I, I speak speak a little bit louder to the mic. Um, My hearing's been ruined by Marshawn. Yeah, I'm saying. <laughs> Now, I'll say like when some of the musical scores are like stuck in the head like over the years and then like so that you can do a Ryan festival again. Um, next to Ryan festival would be like maybe kill them all and just roll out like back to back nights or what else do you guys play? Oh I see it. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, my microphone and I yeah. uh, it's cool. Um, you know, um, we plan on, on doing another Orion Festival. Uh, um, we definitely talked about it, but it's really too early to to uh, uh, really comment on what exactly we're, we're going to be doing. Uh, I, I know that um, it's uh, it's going to be the 30th anniversary of Kill 'Em All pretty soon, and it's going to be the I don't know is it 20th anniversary of Injustice for All, and. You know, I don't mind doing uh, albums in the whole. I think it's a great way to celebrate that that album and, and celebrate those times and then celebrate that music. But the the thought of doing Injustice for All, all of it is a little daunting. <laughs> a little daunting. Something else to fill up their time with, whether it's uh, uh, comic books or heavy metal or or, or, or whatever. And you know. Uh, uh, if, if, if you're a, a, a parent who, who's, who's not really connecting with your child and all of a sudden he's reading a, a comic book that, that has a, 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 a knife going into a, a someone's eye, I mean, they're just, they're, they're gonna have a knee-jerk reaction to it and say, what are you doing? But you know, the, and it's the same with heavy metal. I mean, if, 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 you, if you don't really like, uh, get into it or, or, or go beneath the surface, you're just gonna, 
draw a lot of conclusions and, and think, oh, this is a, this is the source of your your jubilee delinquency or, or whatever. But I mean, you know, the, I, I would think the real source of, of the juvenile delinquency is is because maybe the kid doesn't have enough time with their parents or or they're born bad or they're just born bad a, a bad yeah. seed <laughs> bad movie the bad seed was a great one that's a great question thank you i'm not talking about it is insidious you see that one he's going to be at the show in two weeks really the old lady oh wow he's going to scare you <laughs> i might have to turn around and run <laughs> But it's creepy, right? Oh, uh, it's, 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 it's a great movie. I mean, I was scared and I watched it during the, during the day. And then I, was, I got scared. I mean, I, had, I, I jumped mul multiple times when I watched that movie. That's a good sign of a movie. A good movie. That's good. <laughs> Anybody else have a question? Yeah, I got a few. Um, how do you feel horror movies today compared to horror movies back then? Well, there, there are two different things. I mean, horror, horror movies today, because of the technology and just uh, and 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 everything that preceded it, are, are just just different. I mean, the, the, the one thing that I love about those classic horror movies is, is that they're very very atmospheric. Uh, they had really really great plots, great character development, um, great makeup. Uh, a lot, of, a lot of the times, the, 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 those uh, those movie guys had to improvise because there was no precedent, especially you know, you know, um, guys like Jack Pierce. Um, and you know, I just I, I just find them so endearing. Um, uh, there, there's a lot of great stuff that that, that that comes out today, but I just I, I'm just so into the, the the stuff, particularly from the 20s and 30s. Also, um, can I give this to you real quick? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, we, I, well, we, I, we, we did we, we did talk about Troll Hunter, which, oh, I, yeah, yeah. which I love, and uh, Insidious. I mean, there's a lot of great great horror films that are, that are being made these days. Um, and I, I even on television, like uh, TV shows like The Walking Dead. I mean, I, I love it. You know, um, True Blood. I I love it. Um, it's it's a good time for, for horror movies. There's a lot of them coming out. People are interested. There's a, there's definitely a, a, an audience for it, and it, it's it's a good time to be a horror fan. I mean, it, it's a, um, there. You know, I I I've noticed that there there have been dry periods where there have not been any great uh, movies coming out, and then all of a sudden there's like a whole flood of, of movies coming out that have been really really great. Um, but you know, I, 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 I can find horror movies from from uh, from every decade that I, I I just love. I mean, the fifties, the sixties, the seventies, the eighties, the nineties. A lot of my most favorite um, movies came out during the eighties, like Reanimator and uh, and Hellraiser and From Beyond. I mean, those those movies are great. Um, and uh, there's a lot of movies that come out just recently that, that, are, that are just stupendous. It seems like there's cycles for the horror movies. Yeah. They'll come out in the 30s, the original generation. Well, actually, it was the silent ones within the 30s, and then they re release them in the 40s. Mm -hmm. Then the 50s, science fiction, you know, Adam Bomb, Eric, that started coming out. And then the mid 60s, uh, it was really a resurgence, like 1966. It went crazy, and then it sort of got lost a little in the 70s. Yeah, and, and, yeah. And, and, yeah and, and, I, I remember in, in, in uh, doing this book, I, in, in, there was a period in the 60s when there were not a lot of horror movies being made, particularly in, in, in the later 1960s, and, and uh, um, it was uh, it was interesting to, to, to see that. And uh, I think that uh, uh, part of the reason for that was uh, the whole hippie summer love crazy phase. I guess people were, were, were way too much into love rather than horror. What's, what's funny is there was famous Monsters magazine and uh, the people that grew up reading that started writing books like Stephen King. Yeah, yeah. And uh, all of a sudden yes. great stuff started. Yeah, writing. Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Uh, they were all influenced by famous yeah. Monsters. Yeah, Rick Baker. And it took them like 20 years to get where they were going. Yeah, yeah. You know, but now, now since then it's been pretty solid. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
but I, I mean, to, to comment more on, on the 60s, I think a lot, another reason why there wasn't, wasn't a whole lot of movie, horror movies made in the 60s is because, I mean, as Kevin said, uh, the, in the 60s, that was the big reemergence of, of all the classic stuff in the 30s. I mean, they, all that stuff started uh, being shown on uh, TV shows like Chiller Theater, Shocker Feature, Creature Features, you know. Um, and so I. I, I think, Elvira. Yeah. What's that? And Elvira sort of came out. Yeah, at the end of the 70s. Yeah, the end of the 70s, yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm passionate about, about movies from. from, from all sorts of eras, all sorts of de decades. It's just that the, the classic, uh, uh, classic stuff in the 20s and 30s are the stuff I love the most. So if you're a guitarist, read these books, watch these movies, go play like this guy. <laughs> if you're a writer, do the same thing, it might work. Yeah. Yeah. It's the way it goes. There you go. Uh, hey, Kevin, uh, first hey. of all, your question is what I said hello, I'm just sure to reflect. Uh, I just wanted to know since you're such a huge horror fan. Uh, have you created your, your own monsters? And if so, which one is your favorite one? Which is my favorite one? Uh, if you have created or imagined some monster of your own creation, and if so, which one will be your favorite? I'm, I'm sorry, man, my hearing is so bad these days. Can you see the people? Um, how about um, the collecting of the toys? Do you yeah. remember the first toy you ever bought? Oh, no way. That would, that would have been like a, a, an Aurora monster model from the Frightening Lightning series. And when I was a kid, I would buy these models, put them together, and paint them, and, and live with them for about a week, and then I'd get some firecrackers and, and then pull the thing off. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, or like, you know... The dark I'd, side of the yeah. Yeah, 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 or like get a bunch of... Uh, uh, of matches and you get like an aerosol, them. yeah, aerosol can and like uh, 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 flamethrower them to to, to death. Uh, yeah, I was a little wacky when I was a kid. I got uh, Frankenstein, the first model, and I didn't have anything to paint with it. And my sister for Christmas got a paint by number set, so I painted it with oil paints. <laughs> there you they go. never dry. It's amazing. <laughs> I'd go to pick it up and I'd be like, oh my god. Yeah. For years. Yeah. I mean, it, it's funny, I mean, I used to get really, really creative with, with uh, the ways I used to destroy my models. Uh, I, I would put them on, on, on the asphalt and I'd go up to the second floor of my house and I'd get a big rock and just drop them right on the model. You were a misfit. <laughs> Strange kid. Yeah, 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 I know. Uh, that's great. Yeah, um... Yeah, my first one was Ghost of uh, Frankenstein, which I made Ghost of Frankenstein. Oh, how, yeah. how did you do that? I just painted them all white. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Very clever at that age, yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I love those old aura, aura movie monster models. I mean, the, those are some of the greatest toys, that, in my opinion, that were ever, ever mass produced. And um, whoever the, the, that sculptor was, he was really, really great. I mean, because, like, uh, the Frankenstein model looks like Boris Karloff. It's right on. Yeah, the Dracula uh, model looks like Bela Lugosi. And the covers by James Bama. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Unbelievable artwork. Yeah. I think you own quite a few of them. I, I, I own the Bride of Frankenstein uh, original artwork, and it's in the book. Yeah, that book again. I know, I know, I know. I will see it a couple 